guys, it's Aish and welcome to a new embroidery tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can easily embroider on a swaddle cloth. Now everybody calls this fabric very differently. Some of you have probably know it, know it as swaddle fabric. Some of you know it as cheesecloth. The idea is it's basically this waffle kind of fabric. I'm trying to see if I can get the camera to focus on this a little better. And the thing about this fabric is it's lightweight. It's 100% cotton, but it's got that stretch which basically means that when you lay it down flat, it has the ability to waft and shift around. So it becomes a bit of a tricky fabric to do embroidery on. And uh, the thing is, a lot of products that are in the market that are, you know, fun to do embroidery on are made from this fabric, especially your burp cloth, your swaddle fabric for your babies, and uh, even some clothes as well as uh, why not some blankets right so let's find out how we can embroider on this fabric very very easily and uh, let me tell you the reason why I use the stabilizers that I'm going to sort of talk about right now so the two main stabilizers that you guys can use for this one is um, and I'm going to be showing you of course a brand because it's easier to work with brands you can buy it anywhere around the world so this is called sticky Fabri Solvi it is a um, water soluble adhesive stabilizer I have used this in so many of my embroidery tutorials you might just think that I have no other stabilizer that I use but yeah, it is definitely a favorite an alternative one by the same brand sulky is also called sticky self adhesive tearaway stabilizer I mean the main difference between the wash away and the tearaway both of them are sticky they're going to stick on the back of the fabric on the wrong side of the fabric but this one which is the tear easy it um, it doesn't exactly wash away uh, when you wash it, it doesn't dissolve it just becomes a piece of paper and paper can fall off but this one which is a fabric solve it completely dissolves so um, absolutely preference of what you'd like this is the first layer of stabilizer they're going to use. They're going to be putting on the wrong side of this fabric. Now, what happens is whenever I recommend this fabric to any of my customers, people just seem to buy this and then you just place it at the back and they go ahead and embroider. Now, this is a very big mistake, not because... Um, the stabilizer is horrible it's just that the stabilizer actually is just doing one thing which is we have a strip of this is it's going to compensate for the stretch so I would use this stabilizer for any fabric that's seemingly stretchy or for very dense embroidery even on like cotton cloth I'm going to link a YouTube video over here where you can see where I've used the same sort of stabilization technique but the concept of using this guy is to just compensate for stretch the fabric still needs stability, so we're definitely not going to ignore tear away stabilizer. So this is your tear easy stabilizer. I'll put a link for it in the description box below. I always use two layers because then I'm guaranteed of the stability that is being provided by my stabilizer. Remember, the more stable your project is, the better it can handle embroidery. Okay, I'm going to be embroidering a few alphabets on this piece of cheesecloth. I'm going to do it in a very fun way. On one half of it, I'm going to be doing, um, so I'm going to be using a, like a medium sized tube. And on one half, I'm going to do it with the same name on the same fabric with the same hooping with that sticky stabilizer. And then the other one is just going to be a basic hooping. So you guys can see the difference in the stitch quality. And you can decide what works best for you. All right, so I'm going to take this moment to just mark out the boundaries just so I know where, um, you know, where the sticky will be and where the sticky will not be. I'm using a friction pen. Guys, friction pens are amazing. Just a little bit of like a rubbing action and the mark disappears. So I'm going to fold it there. I'm going to just literally peel off the stabilizer. right and I'm going to place it close to that line so it's kind of like more towards the center not at the top so I can obviously see where the stabilizer is the thing about cheesecloth is it's so see-through that's kind of why you might like to use the wash away one because then you just don't have to worry about any residue um, anything extra over here I'm just gonna cut it out I don't want it to stick to my hoop. this is practice fabric guys so I don't mind if I cut some of it out but yeah, if you've got it on something that is a retail product, just make sure you um, don't cut the product as you cut that along. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is um, 
this part is going to be without any sticky stabilizer but we're going to be using the whole of the tear away stabilizer so what's going to happen is um, I place it like this all right and now you know so I'm just gonna probably put a little arrow so you guys know which one is the sticky side yeah this is my sticky side without any arrow is the non sticky side so hopefully it's quite clear once we take it to the machine and as always we're going to be putting the hoop underneath try to make sure that the line is on the center of the hoop so I've got equal amounts of area for both sides of the stabilizer I forget which hoop this is <laughs> so yeah uh, we got the hoop correctly now it's in the center and then I'm just gonna put this guy on top uh, the arrows have to match there there is a for those of you who don't know there is a counter arrow here and then there's an arrow there and we're just gonna place that accordingly All right now good embroidery is tight embroidery okay so if you feel like you don't like this lump just go ahead unhoop and then wiggle the fabric that side you want to make sure that it's tight because when you imagine the speed at which your needle is going to be punching into the fabric if it is not super tight right? it needs to be tight enough for it to accept really really well so now we know that this area over here has that stabilizer and the terabyte and this area at the bottom doesn't have anything now I don't expect the differences to be that drastic but for a lot of you who are embroidering on these projects adding that one extra layer is going to make all the difference to the cleanliness of your embroidery and that's what we're aiming for clean nice beautiful embroidery so now let's take this to the machine and let's do the embroidery test I want to take this moment to talk about the needle that you use it's a swaddle fabric and it is a lightweight fabric we don't want the needle to be super thick because that's going to create holes on the fabric that are very not pretty to look at so make sure you're using a 70 needle I think this is great for any decent 50 weight thread that you would possibly use on the machine now look at this beautiful baby that I'm going to be embroidering on today I'm going to take a moment to say that the date in which we're filming this um, uh, this tutorial and we're uploading this tutorial uh, we are having a discount on Bernina's and Burnett's and it's all until the 5th of May 2022 so if you're based out of UAE, Kuwait, Oman or Bahrain take advantage of it and we're going to definitely get these guys to you uh, at a very very good price all right so uh, let us get on with it I'm gonna be embroidering I really do love the 590 thing it's one of the best machines for sewing and embroidery um, and uh, it does not disappoint I think it's a perfect size and I think the features in the machine are absolutely stellar so and the crystal edition is just I mean I know this is totally my kind of thing I love playing so yeah I'm gonna put up a link of the uh, 590 unboxing that I did um, you can use it to check on for any further set, like 590s that are out there in the market because the accessories are more or less similar. Uh, Crystal Edition is, uh, I think we're almost out of stock of it, so I don't know uh, what's next. All right, I'm 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 done uh, blabbering about the machine. Time to do the embroidery, guys. Loaded a very, very basic design, and the first thing I'm going to be doing is embroidering on the... Um on the extremely reinforced area with the sticky stabilizer with the tearaway so I'm just gonna go ahead uh, just have a look at the design um, it's gonna take seven minutes it's gonna be exactly the same and I'm gonna do one more over here I'm gonna put it on a time-lapse so you guys can see that we're being extremely authentic with this process let's see how it goes Okay, so we finished that and the embroidery has come out actually pretty awesome. Zoom in and show you guys because I'm not too worried to show that to you. Oh, look at that. 
we're going to do is we're going to take the same design. I'm going to bring the needle over here and I'm going to embroider it on this side. Now, remember what I said, guys, the hooping is pretty tight. The needle is correct. You know, the machine is fabulous. It's a very high chance that you may not see too many differences between the two. Um, but for those of you who are struggling, I really think that that extra layer is going to save your life. But don't forget that you need the tearaway stabilizer for ultimate stability. So let us time lapse the next bit and then we can do a quick chit chat before I close this tutorial. And I really, really hope you guys found this useful. So let us uh, do the next embroidery. All right, my friends, we're done. So now let's unhook this and let us uh, check out the differences between the two. So we've unhooked it. I'm going to slice it in the middle. Okay, and let's get rid of the excess stuff here. The great thing about tearaway stabilizer is you just peel off the layers one by one. And um, yeah, I mean, you've completely taken off most of the stabilizer. Whereas this one, of course, we've got a layer of sticky stabilizer at the bottom that is going to still be there. And if you use a water-soluble one, just dip it in water and it's gone. Otherwise, this is paper nonetheless, guys. Once you, um, you know, sort of wash it, I'm sure it will just peel off by itself as well, just as easily as this because it is a sticky tear easy stabilizer. Now, let's look at these two embroideries like next to each other shall we Let me move the camera a bit down so it's easier for me to show it to you now both of them were equally as tight as each other and both of them had the same embroidery same size same settings i did it in the same hope to show you that but if you can notice the holes that you can see between the threads in this is a lot more than on this let's just see that letter b so this is with the sticky, this is without the sticky. Do you see that? And God forbid if in any of this process in your embroidery there is a bit of a thread jam, nesting, your bobbin thread finishes, whatever. There can be a lot of these obstacles in embroidery. This could get worse. So it's honestly just an extra layer and it just changes the game of your embroidery. Now, I'm seemingly quite impressed with this, don't get me wrong, because for the fact that it didn't have that stretch compensator, um, it has done pretty well. Uh, I guess the machine settings and needle, the thread were optimal for this fabric, but I genuinely think this is a winner for me. And I want you guys to win in your embroidery attempts. So give it a whirl. I'm going to link all the products that I've used in this tutorial in the description box below. And I'm going to take this moment to say that if you really enjoyed learning with me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, which is somewhere, somewhere like here. I don't niggle my finger in between, but definitely hit the subscribe button, like the video, comment, and tell me what you'd like to see next, and we'll make it happen. So this is Aish from Classic Quilts. Peace out, guys.